Hello, my name is Helena. I'm from Kink Design and today I'm going to be showing you the basics of chalk painting with Annie Sloan chalk paint. We are working today on this wonderful church pew. It's from the 1900s and it came from a church in Belfast and it's just perfect for chalk paint and I'll explain why. Because it's solid wood, it's just perfect for chalk paint. It has this beautiful detail um, that we are going to highlight with our chalk paint and waxes. So first of all, why I chose Annie Sloan. Annie Sloan chalk paint is the original chalk paint. She um, created it. It is her invention and it is very, very versatile and it's very easy to use. A lot of people uh, would be a little bit intimidated by chalk paint, um, but honestly, this is a beginner's guide because it is very easy to use and um, very versatile and very forgiving. So if you make a mistake with any Sloan chalk paint, you can just paint over it. It's only paint, it doesn't matter. So first of all, to get started, we need to stare, we need to open our chalk paint and you can see some of the pigments sitting on top. So you need to give it a good stir. Always use something wooden to stir chalk paint. Um, it's just best to stir with a wooden stick, a wooden stir or a wooden spoon. So give it a good stir, get right down to the bottom and mix up all those pigments into the chalk paint. You can see the consistency, it's quite thick. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the chalk paint and put it inside the lid and let it sit out for a while. And what this does is it thickens it up even more so we can achieve some texture without having to add anything to this chalk paint to create texture. A lot of people use um, different additives to thicken their paint so that they can dab it on and create texture. But with any Sloan chalk paint, you don't need to do that. Just leave some out and it will thicken up. And at the same time, you can also dilute any Sloan chalk paint and use it as washes. As I'm saying, it's very, very, very versatile. It's great value for money. It's manufactured in Oxford in the UK in her factory. So it's great value for money if you're in the UK. Um, and it has a beautiful array of colours. So we will get started now with the preparation of this piece. Um, there's very, it's very little finish on it. So what I'm going to do is I, in here I have a degreaser mixture and it's just water and TSP. I'm just going to spray the piece and why do you use a degreaser to clean your pieces? Even if your piece looks clean, um, grease comes off hands. So if it has been touched, then there is likelihood that there's an oil, oil from hands, grease from hands, and a degreaser, as you can see already, removes it very fast. And that's all you need to do for a piece like this. So give it a good clean. So the degreasers um, that you can use are sugar soap. You can use sugar soap, which is um, very economical. You can get it in any, any of the shops. You can use um, elbow grease. It's a little spray that you get in the supermarkets here for a pound. Uh, as long as it is a really good quality cleaner with a degreaser because you don't want, if there's grease or oil on your piece, then your paint won't, won't stick to it, it'll be blotchy. So, so just give it a good clean. You can see, see the amount of grime and grease that's coming off this piece. So just keep going, spray the whole thing. And give it a good clean. Thank you. 
with a lot of hands on the side and on the top, lifting this up. And as it's a very old piece that was in storage, as well as the grease and the ground, there's a lot of dust that have filled up. solution and then I rinsed it with clean cold water until my rag um, was clean till there was no, no no dirt on the rag so this is what it looks now all nice and clean so the next piece of our prep is to scuff sand it so what is scuff sanding and why do we do it so scuff sanding is when you take a high grit sandpaper and you just gently go over the surface. And what you're doing by doing that is you're creating a little bit of texture, a little bit of roughness um, on the surface so your chalk paint clings to it better. Um, you can paint with any stone and anything, ceramics, glass, mirrors, um, but when it comes to your furniture, if you want to be painting and selling your furniture, you want longevity you want to know and be confident that when you sell your piece of furniture that you've done a good enough job that the paint stays on the furniture so this is why we scuff sand so when i say a high grit sandpaper i mean anything um I suppose around 180 and up you, you can use 120 but it could it, you don't want to score into the piece you don't want to score into the wood or into the varnish. You don't want to see lines or scores. You just want to create a little bit of roughness to give the chalk paint something better to cling to. So I've brought a selection of sandpapers to show you, um, you can use any of these. So this is 180. This is one for an electric sander, but I find these are very good because of the size of them, they fit in your hand, and they're just very good and handy. So that's one type. Then you have these. So these are mesh. You buy them in sheets. So this one is a uh, 240, and the manufacturer is Jesse B of this. But I like these mesh ones. You cut them to whatever size of your electric sander and they just stick to the, the front of your sander and you sand. But they're also very good for, you see those long, whoop, those long, <laughs> these bits. So that's an odd shape and it's a tight, there's a tight um, little gap at the back. So the likes of that is very good. You can cut a wee strip, fold it, and sand around things. So these, this is also something that I use quite often. Then you have these little, um, these are for mirrors. So this, this comes in a roll. 
So this one is 150. This comes in a big roll and you just rip them off the same as um, kitchen roll or toilet roll. They're the perforated and you just rip off a little section. Um, and they're foam, we've got foam on the back and they're from Mira. Then you have the legs of this. Just says super fine and it's just a wee spongy satin pad. I'm showing you all these because all these, all these are good. Um, and then this is just a little sanding pad that you can get at your local hardware store. They're about 50 pence, if, uh, maybe even cheaper. And again, they just come in um, fine, medium, or, you know, they're a rough grit. So you just lift a fine or a medium. And then these are little sanding pads, which I have for my fist student sander. These are 120. A wee bit rough. So what I do, if I don't have a fine sandpaper, is I get two 120s, I put them together, and I rub them off each other. So what I'm basically doing is sanding them down with each other. So I do that, and then, see, quite, they're quite clearly now not 120. A carpenter, a joiner once told me that if I did that, I would double, so this is a 120, it will go to 240. I don't know if it's exactly double, but um, so that's another handy tip. If you have two, if you have sandpaper that's too rough, sand them off each other and they become a lot finer. So any of those, you can use any of those to scuff sand. Um, and what we are going to do, I'm going to move you a little closer so you can see close up. So. So you can see here, it's all clean, but there's still there's still varnish on, there's still a finish. You can see where the light's hitting it. Um, so we want to rough it up a little bit. Um, and give it something. We want to give the chalk paint something to thank you. So I'm going to use the um, 180 one because I like how it fits in my hand. And we're just going to go and circle and open. Just over the entire Apologies for the rattle. So you can see, little circular, but that's not scoring into the varnish, into the wood. It's on the very, very surface, and we are just creating a rough. Oh, I've just found, I've just noticed the rattling is the door. So I'll try and stop the door from rattling while we work. So there you go. So we're just doing a wee, we're not sanding the whole piece down, we're not sanding the varnish off. Just gonna light sand and that's why what, that's what's called scuff sanding. So then when you scuff sand the whole piece, you're obviously creating a little bit of dust. So what you do then is you get your clean damp cloth that you've used and you go over the piece and you give it a wipe of the damp cloth to take all that the fine dust off from the scuff sanding. So can you see, I think you can see, you can definitely see here um, that we have, it's a lot duller than it was. It was very shiny and smooth and that's because there was still some of the original finish on it. And we just want to create Preparation's all about creating the best surface to paint on to ensure that your paint doesn't come off um, and has the best the best chance of longevity. Because when you're selling your pieces you want your customer to know that it's a good job and that um, the paint is out of death. So I'll continue on with that. 
So our piece is dry and ready for painting. Let's recap on the prep. We had washed with a degreaser, clean thoroughly, um, then rinse with clean water, rinse and rinse until all that um, solution is gone. Then we scuff sanded it with um, a 180 sandpaper and then we also wiped it all down again to make sure all that fine dust was gone. So the piece is dry and it is ready for painting and as you can see, well I hope you can see, it is duller than when we started. So it has taken, um, that, that cleaning has taken off quite a lot of the old finish and we're left with this lovely, lovely surface of solid wood to paint. So the paint I'm using again is olive, remember give it a good stir, stir up all those pigments from the bottom. Give it a good stir and the best brush, I think the best brush, and I remember this tutorial, is just what I think. So my personal opinion and uh, from the experience that I have, what I think works best. So I think what works best is a round brush. So the one I'm using is this, just a round brush. This one is uh, a Klingon Oval 45. Um, but you can use any, any big round brush. And the best way to use any Sloan paint is to put it on in all directions. So brush strokes in all directions because that's what's going to give you your lovely texture. And it's also going to give, when we come to wax it, it's going to give the wax, it's going to give the waxes a lovely um, surface to go in and out of. So just putting it on, push it on in all directions. You can, some people like to spray, some people like to spray some fine mist water onto it to make it smooth if they're going to blend two colours. But we're not doing that today because I want to show you how to paint with it and how to use the waxes to give you definition. So I'm not going to be using water, but you can, if you think it's too thick or if it's dragging, you can spray water um, on it to reactivate the chalk paint. Not 
contaminating the color. But well, we're using one color today. So we will just paint straight from the can. So now I'm going to do these lovely
another way to add interest is to dab your paint on. So dabbing your paint on creates this beautiful texture. Yeah. 